greatest indicators of future success for, for students uh, is their ability to connect to school, to connect to the teacher. Um, and all teachers know the essence, one of the, one of the essences of good teaching is your ability to relate to kids, to draw them in. If you understand the 40 developmental assets, they're like the ingredient for a healthy kid. Um, and if you, if you know what they are, um, you can implement them in your daily conversations with, with a kiddo. I think that for a lot of people, a lot of it just makes sense. Over the hills and far away, Mother Ducky said quack, 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 quack. And we have tried, I think, throughout the district to um, integrate these into our learning. It can be easily done. You just need to want to do it, and it's really a pretty easy thing once you understand what they are. Quartz. Ounces, pounds, quartz. Um, pints. 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 So, what ounces? Huh? Stuff like that. So, why is it important to learn that? Do you think? Because I mean, if you're trying to make a bowl of oatmeal, yeah. you need to know how, to, like, what you need to put in the measuring cup for milk. Over the past several years at Carl Liam School, we've worked hard to develop positive relationships with students, both teacher to student, student to student, um, and also developing those relationships with parents as well. Because we know if we have positive relationships, um, student learning and student achievement will increase. Students don't always necessarily see the value behind the activities that you're doing in class, and at least with the positive relationship, they understand that there's a reason why we're doing this. On the student side of things, we've also tried to get into classrooms and to talk with kids, um, not only about how they're doing, but you know, what are they learning about? Um, it just shows to them that we think that learning is important and it's a priority. 80, so we got the number 80, and it says 80. So what are you learning how to do? Find, like, classes, words, and numbers. If the kids don't feel like you care about them, then they're not going to care about what you ask them to do. The relationship has to come first in order for them to get anything out of the class that they're sitting in. Now one of the ways we um, just connect with kids is being visible throughout the day, but especially in the morning um, when kids get off the bus in the hallway, we're, good morning, how are you doing Johnny, or how are you doing Susie? and say, hey, we missed you yesterday, um, trying to improve that absenteeism, make sure kids are, want to come to school, let them know that we care about them, and then once again when they leave um, for the afternoon in the bus saying, see you later guys, have a great day. It's just to create that positive environment. Relationships differ um, from K through 12. Obviously, different chronological age groups require different types of relationships. Here at the junior high, you're working with kids when they've come out of that traditional classroom setting where they're with that one teacher, or mostly with the one teacher, and they get thrown in to five different teachers and all of these schedule changes, and it's very, um, it's pretty traumatizing for some of them. They don't deal with it very well at all. And I think that they're used to having that tight bond with their teachers, and so they come here um, and they're trying to learn about their own emotions, they're trying to learn organization skills. Her relationship with me helps me study and focus more than when a teacher doesn't connect with me. When she connects with me, like we'll spend time after school working on stuff that I'm behind on and she's helped me get ahead. I just think it's one of the most important things that you can do with a teacher is learn how to make connections with kids. They respect you so much more. Um, they're going to want to learn what you're saying because they have that respect for you, because they care about you. It's showing that you want them to succeed and I think a lot of them sometimes struggle because they don't think anyone is watching. They don't think anyone cares. Connecting for a lot of us is an easy thing to do, but for some kiddos who are exposed to um, what we would call the adverse consequences of childhood, which might be domestic violence, substance abuse in the home, um, frequent moving, broken homes, homelessness. Um, kiddos are really impacted um, by those events. Having that positive relationship helps me find ways that we can help the students connect better. 
you know, maybe there's something that doesn't necessarily interest them. But by knowing the student a little better, I can find something that may interest them a little bit more and they'll actually go in and do what I need them to do to meet the standards. If you try to connect our kids out in the community, things like the Trafton Center, um, we work with the Animal Welfare Society, uh, because it's, it's a chance to see how our kids are applying the things that we talk about in class. It's a cool kind of assessment to see how they, how they act out in public and in other uh, situations besides the classroom. Is that like a new assignment or is it something you already did? I already did them, but she isn't doing it. Okay, cool. So if you know that a teacher is going to treat you with respect and care about what kind of day you're having, um, then that's the kind of class that you look forward to right, going so to. Next At least week, I always did. Be like empty. Though. Yeah. All right. Now high five. All right. All right. <laughs>